Okay, take two. Apparently, my video just froze and just shut off. So I'm back. <laughs> I just wait for those who are on to come back on. All right, sorry about that, guys. Apparently, my my feed just froze and just ended all on its own. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. So take two. Hey, Cassie. <laughs> so I'm seeing Cassie. All right. So, all right. So why is everyone is actually coming back in? Those who were here. Yes. Yeah, so as I was saying, that's actually just two testimonies. Um, that I that, that I can give that have come to mind and there's actually a lot a lot more testimonies not all I, I can't say that that we documented all but there's a lot more where that came from because as you know this is actually not something walking in Christ identity in Christ life in Christ is not just as the name of this group says it's actually a lifestyle and so it's not something like an event that we plan and we we plan to just, um, we plan we get cameras just to, to take to take note of the event. It is actually a lifestyle. So wherever we go, we encounter persons, we pray for them, we, and, see, and we have seen results in many different ways, many different ways amongst family, friends, uh, even personally. I have many personal testimonies apart from the ASU with the kidney stone that actually, as, as, I, as I mentioned, came out as we commanded it to, 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 to mash up and come out. And it came out and, and the kidneys were actually healed over the course of the, and the following days. And um, uh, uh, another personal test testimony is that I have actually been in bodybuilding for some time. I've been all out of it for about a year, a, a little more than a year now. And, um, there was actually another personal tes testimony is that while I was training one day, I actually bent down with weight on my shoulder and literally felt I, as if I couldn't get back up. Yeah, and right in, right in the gym, I felt that pain. And when you feel that pain, literally a, a chill went through my body. I felt like, whoa, do not tell me that this is the end of my back. That's the first thought that came to me. <laughs> yeah. and um <clears throat> when it happened i quickly pulled myself together remember that my reference point is the spirit of god and i i just literally spoke to my back i said in the name of jesus i released the spirit of god into my back to heal it and restore it immediately i just paused for about literally five seconds bend down and there was no pain the pain left yeah um i i, I don't want to actually spend too much time going into all of these different testimonies but i said it, it was I, I thought it was necessary to give somewhat of a an, an introduction so you all know that um just as for i can say this very very safely for poly b also that this is not theory for us. This is our life, our lifestyle. And we pray that, as I said, that we can uh, point you into the, in, the right, in the right direction and bring you into maturity. Not that I'm saying that we are all mature. We are learning also. But um, we, we pray that we can point you into the right direction to begin to live the life that Jesus actually made possible for us. Yeah, we are living testimonies of it. We are living testimonials of it. And this is what we are here to do. Yeah, so <clears throat> um, having said all of that, 
the topic of this of this very uh, uh, this this session would not be short. I already spent about a good about a good half hour, forty five minutes, about an hour on this, giving my personal testimony and some testimonies that that um, that came to mind with regards to what we have seen so far. And um, I at some other time I'll actually give some more testimonies in the group just to edify and encourage you encourage you all that things may seem a bit sometimes things may seem a bit challenging but it, the spirit of god is in you christ is in you and you can overcome it you can overcome it right one of the things that one of the things that became very clear in my deprogramming of my mind from the from the 15 or 25 years of pentecostalism the indoctrination of the of the religious of, of the religious sect the only thing that came to my that 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 that, that became very clear in, in throughout this period of time is that the religious approach the religious perspective is centered around you doing something to acquire to acquire what God has for you it is centered around acquisition you are always told from if if there is anything before i get into what we are here to speak about tonight if, I, if there's anything hey paul <laughs> sub bro <laughs> i caught i caught a glimpse of your of your life with um with alex i believe whilst you're in the vehicle awesome testimony awesome much love to you and and um, to and to your family. Yeah. Um. As I said, as I was saying, that if there is anything that we, I can, I can, I would like to make very clear in my first video here, in the first first um, video here in the inner circle. If there's anything that I'd like to make very clear in Christ, as we, I know that we are all here to mature, to grow in Christ to come into the realities of the kingdom yeah and i know my holy brother paul would have been pouring out with regards to walking in the spirit and living as a spirit son of god in the realities of the kingdom that jesus so um, he went through so much suffering to purchase for us yeah but if, if there's anything that I would like to see in particular with regards to um, your growth in Christ, you will, you will actually begin to see your greatest growth in Christ when you, when you move away from the, the religious approach. And the religious approach is that you are never enough. That you are always lacking something and that you need to do more you need to do something to experience god you need to do something to experience what god has promised you need to fast more you need to pray more you need to go to church more okay? you need to there's always a need okay? and it is very consistent with the wounds of the serpent to Adam and to, to Eve in the garden. The, when the serpent spoke to Eve, the serpent spoke from the perspective that she was lacking and the fruit would bring her into totality. And if there's anything that will hinder your walk in Christ, is that perspective. In the three and a half years that, that I have been that 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 I, that we have been walking in the realities of the kingdom, these three and a half years that we have experimentally taken in, in that experimental approach. One of the things that one of the things that had become that became explicitly clear is. You must, and I hear Paul saying this over and over, and I'm sure it's something that he has repeated in this group. You do not live towards God. You have you, your, your reality is in Christ, 
are living from God. In other words, you are at the destination already. Your task right now is to learn yourself in Christ. To learn, or to put it in a different way, no, 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 notice I say yourself in Christ. None of them saying that you are separate from Christ as yourself. The mere thought of yourself independent of Christ is a hindrance. <laughs> so when I say myself, I am not, I'm actually saying Christ, Holy Spirit. So the, 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 your biggest hindrance, one of the biggest hindrances if, that you need to eliminate and make a conscientious decision. This is not something that magically comes. It's a conscientious decision. Conscientious decision. That you do not need to get to God. You do not need to get closer to God. You do not need to do anything to experience God. You are there already. You are the finished product. Listen to what I'm saying. You are the finished product product the only thing left to do is to learn the features of the finished product does that make sense to learn the features and how this finished product works if you make that conscientious decision you are well on the way you are well on the way to walking in the realities of God and walking like Jesus. I just want to say that one more time. Your biggest hindrance in Christ is the perspective that you are lacking. Paul himself said that you are complete. The Apostle Paul that is. You are complete in Christ. If you think that you need to do something more or you need to um, you need something else something more you are your, you are actually literally creating your own hindrance in Christ you are literally locking your way locking yourself out of Christ in Christ, we work from completion. So there is nothing that we need to do to get God to move. There is nothing that we need to do to have God in our lives. To walk in the power of God or in the presence of God. Because you are complete, your, your only task is to learn and have accurate knowledge of everything that is yours in Christ. So in other words, you are learning your construct. You are not learning how to get there. <laughs> right? A simple example would be a vehicle. You may purchase a vehicle from a dealer. Let's say you purchase um, a Land Rover. You put this vehicle there is nothing that you need to do to get this vehicle to move faster there is nothing that you need to do to get this vehicle to cool its engine you do not need to acquire anything for that to happen you have a complete vehicle in your hand the only thing that you need to do upon receiving this vehicle is grab the manual or, or any booklet that gives you information on the vehicle. And once you learn the construct of the vehicle, what the vehicle is designed to do and its features, you can benefit fully from the vehicle. Does that make sense? My beloved sister Patty is an awesome seeing you here today. <laughs> I have missed you all much. Missed you all much. Blessings and abundant love to you, Holy Sister. 
Yeah, so you learn, you are learning how saying you're learning how to be who you are already. Okay, I think what you're saying is that you're learning how to be. Technically, you can say that, yeah. You are actually learning your construct. So, for example, you can have a vehicle, and because you do not understand the components of the vehicle, you can drive that vehicle and sweat every day. <laughs> when you learn that the vehicle is, is designed with air condition, and by pushing this button, the air condition will come on, then you can benefit from the air condition. In the same way, when we come into Christ, we come into full unity with Christ. And what we do is learn the promises of God, which are those buttons. And once you learn the promises of God, which is in unity with the Spirit of God, you learn the law of the Spirit of life. So once you understand what the promises are, you know this button <laughs> turns on the AC and we can live comfortably. We do not have to sweat anymore. This is what we do. By learning the promises and renewing our mind to that law, not the law of Moses, but the word of God, the promises of God, we learn the we literally learn the law of the kingdom and by doing that we begin to walk in the spirit it's very simple so in christ we are not we do not need to fast more we do not need to pray more a lot of persons actually believe that sometimes you're not praying more and you need to build a relationship with god christ has now become you. You do not need more relationship with God. You have Christ. You are. You are Christ has become you. And Christ has had a relationship with Father. For eternity long. You are benefiting from that relationship. You do not need a relationship with God. You were placed into relationship with God. You were placed into a relationship with God that had an investment of eternity past. <laughs> right? Let's think, think about what I'm telling you. You have investment of eternity past and now you are, you are actually a beneficiary of an eternity past of investment in relationship. So what I'm saying is simply Remove the, the mindset of acquisition. Accept the mindset of exi exist of existence. Existential. And from there, you are now walking in the realities of God. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, so the topic actually that I that I that I that I, I I wanted to actually address tonight, and I I, I name this part one. Now, um, um, amidst the body of Christ, there's, there has been great, um, great friction regarding the law. Right? Some have actually taken extreme perspectives. Some some actually extreme perspectives with grace. Some have taken extreme perspectives with law. And some are just in between. And they don't know where the line is. Where the parameter is. And so I thought it fit. That one of the first things that we should address, that, I, that I'd like to address in the inner circle, is what Jesus said that he fulfilled the law. How did he do that? What does that mean? What is the law? Because many persons are of the opinion that when they hear law, they some some think 
the Ten Commandments. So the first thing that I like to address is what is the law? And when we say follow the law, what exactly are we talking about? How does the law pertain to us? How is it related to us? What, what is the context? In other words, if I'm to put that into one center, into one question, what is the context of the law in the new covenant? It is in your Bible. What is the context? Is that making sense? Is anyone here? Everyone here? All right. But he says grace. Awesome. Yes, it is grace. But what we're going to do here in part one and part two, what I'm going to do here is actually highlight and make it very, very clear as to what is the context of the law, and then you will understand what is the extent of your grace. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we say the law, what are we talking about? What is the law? It's known as Moses' law, the law of Moses, God's law, the commandments. What exactly is the law? Now, many of us have heard, and it, it is actually very, it's something that is in different camps, different denominations. They have different perspectives of this thing. And because of the different perspectives, which most of them are not very accurate, my diet, not that I'm saying that, that um, not that I'm saying that it is, it is some great mystery, but what we're going to do here is actually make it very clear for you. Hey Sherry, blessings, Holy Sister. Now seeing your, your messages. Hey Priscilla, <laughs> beloved Holy Sister, blessings to you. Much love, much love to you, Priscilla, to Sherry. Yeah, so. When, when we say the law, what exactly are we, are we speaking about? Anybody? What is the law? Just type in the, just type in the window. What is the law? It's awesome to see you, Sherry. I have not been on for a little while, as I explained down in my in the in, in the in the first in the first half of the video. The first take. And I've had been dealing with someone for seeing unforeseen issues so that has required my undivided attention for about for the last two to three months but it's time to get ruling <laughs> the kingdom is waiting so i missed you all greatly so i'm really glad to hear to see you here sherry priscilla patty missed you all a lot right yes the mosaic law sherry says 600 and something rules right it's actually called the law of Moses. Right? Now, many persons are actually of the opinion that when we come into Christ, there are denominations, and you will hear it. And if you're actually struggling with this, I hope that this makes it very clear for you. When we say the law, we are actually referring to the law of Moses. Now, there are many, many denominations also that actually say that when they say law, they actually preach and teach, and I'm not bashing them. But we must identify the truth. If we don't understand the truth, the objective truth, we are we will never know when we are actually venturing into erroneous grounds. How that makes sense. So when we say the law, what we are actually referring to is the law of Moses. Now, to be very clear, some may say that the law are actually ten commandments. That is not accurate. Right? The law of Moses is actually referred to in scripture as the book. Of the law. Anybody familiar with that? So if you're saying the law is Ten Commandments, and the Bible is actually calling the law the book of the law, then we have a problem. <laughs> we definitely have a problem. 
Because all over the scripture, the law of Moses, the Mosaic law, is literally referred to as the book of the law. Right? I can refer you to, let's say, for example, I'll just pull some 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 um, some excerpts here. Let's look at Deuteronomy 30, 10. Right, Deuteronomy 30, 10 says this. Amplified version. If you listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. Notice it says book of the law. But this is this is just one year in the Bible. We can take you to Joshua, Joshua 1 8. So we, I'm, I'm just posting this here so that we make, make it very clear that the law is not Ten Commandments, it is a book. And we'll identify what the book is. <laughs> Joshua 1 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall read and meditate many meditate, meditate on it day and night so that you'll be careful you'll be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful let's throw in another script here so that's old testament um some persons actually argue that Moses' law is not God's law. Literally, persons actually argue that, that the law of God, I know the nominations that argue, actually argue that the law of Moses and the, the law of God is the Ten Commandments, and the law of Moses are the sacrificial laws. I'm not going to call the, the name of the, 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 the nomination. But if you have ever heard that and you are actually confused, you can actually refer to Deuteronomy, Sorry, Nehemiah 8.18. Yeah, clear up the question. Nehemiah 8.18 says, 